All right, folks, it's another Friday here. Welcome. Let's go straight to business. This is Journalist Hangout. I am Citizen Jones. Today on the program, President Buhari blames Libya crisis for influx of illegal arms. He says closure of borders did not stop inflow of illicit weapons. Again, confusion as courts give conflicting orders on Ararume following Imun North senatorial election. And later on, CBN defends the Naira with $5.6 billion in three months. I'm hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju. That, that's, that's a double barrel name, Babajide Kolade. Why you not drop one? That's a, it's a long story. Okay. Mm, it's okay. A long story. Not, not for this evening. Mm. But your cap, I, I, I like it. You know, see how it be now? Yes. Yeah. I'm a proper Nigerian. Bam. And um, today, my people in the Benue Valley. Okay. I'm solidarizing with oh, them. Come. I'm solidarizing with them. Good. <laughs> Yami, so you see, it puts spades to this problem of I never get cap to size my <laughs> head. And so it was just pretending. But Yami Owokwe is also here. Thank I you greet so you. Much, sir. Yes. Welcome back. Yes. Okay, then. The team is ready. I hope you are. Okay then, you know, these, to say the least, are troublous times for us as a people and for the Sahel as a region. President Mohamedou Buhari, himself a retired army general, must have been shooting from the hips when he concluded on Thursday that as far as Libya remains unstable, illegal arms would proliferate the Sahel region of the continent. Not even the closure of our borders for close to a year was enough to stem the tide of illegal arms uh, arms shipment into our country. Yes, the damage is done, but we must stop looking at the, of the window and more on the mirror. Damage reduction and control, that's more the name of the game, Jide. Yes. Um, the, I'm not surprised that we have come to that realization that the closure of the borders did not stop the flow of illicit weapons into our country. And I think that we've talked about that a number of times here. Um, the rate of crime in a Nigeria Republic may actually not um, be as high as we have it in Nigeria. But my chance, illegal arms merchants, Call them based in, call, call based them in the Nigeria of Republic. Death. Based in Nigeria Republic, mm. I've found in Nigeria a fantastic market. Mm. Every time people get arrested, they tell us that they bought the, their weapons from gun runners based in Nigeria Republic. Nigeria itself, I've said that a number of times, is more like a failed state. Mm. Most parts of Niger Republic ungoverned, outlaws, running riot. So there's no way that that would not affect our country because our borders with Niger Republic are the most extensive. They are the most at the map, stretching, yeah, yeah. stretching um, through about eight states or so. You know, from the northwest. Let's take, say from Kebbi State in the northwest, all the way to uh, Bono State in okay. the northeast. Yeah, yeah. So you find um, where, where it borders Chad. Yes, know, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. There are some local governments in Bono State uh, that share a border with uh, Niger Republic. You know, a number of them. They even Yobe. You know, and mm. and uh, Jigawa, the rest of them. So and Sokoto. So about eight of those states. So the border so extensive is, is about a thousand kilometers. And these borders are not um, well policed. They are not, in most cases, not even manned. Yeah. Yeah. In some cases, the, the boundaries are not... Um, Delineated. Yes, probably. not re even recognizable. Mm. So people 
feel free to bring in all kinds of stuff into our country. Then, of course, when the president is talking about uh, illicit weapons, you do not expect Boko Haram to use the conventional borders. They don't, they have no business with the conventional borders. They have their own routes through which for, uh, illicit weapons are funneled to them. Those illicit weapons, all the way from Libya, is right. The bulk of those weapons are from Libya because some of the weapons that have been recovered from Boko Haram by our troops, you see NATO written clearly on them. A lot of them uh, were clearly not uh, am I, part of our inventory. I might understand that to mean national, North Atlantic. Yes, because they played a key part in the unseating of, uh, okay. in the removal of uh, Gaddafi. Yeah. NATO was on ground. NATO supported the rebels and armed those rebels. So those weapons fell into the arms of bad people. And when um, everything collapsed in Libya, everyone went away with the weapons that he had. So some of them are today contract fighters who uh, have gone to Mali to fight. Some of them have, uh, have um, actually come even into Nigeria to assist yeah. uh, uh, Boko Haram. So it's a difficult thing. And then a lot of, uh, it's important that I say this because there have been some arguments that I had with some people on social media. A lot of our border posts in the northeast mm. are not manned because the customs men, the immigration officials, do not have the capacity to stand up to Boko Haram when they are bringing yeah. in weapons, when they are coming okay. into the country with their, with their uh, cavalry or fighters. So how do you then stop them? A lot of those border positions are not manned as we speak. Mm. So they would come in. A fighting group that can overrun three army bases at the same location in one day. You don't expect the customs men to go and stand up to them. And we've seen even in Sokoto State, if you Google it after this meeting, you'll see in Sokoto State, bandits kidnapped customs men. Mm. They, 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 they went to the, the border post kidnap them and ask for ransom. Now, those are the people that you expect to apprehend those bringing in weapons. So we have a very, very uh, terrible uh, situation. situation, yes, on our hands. And I'm not surprised that the president said uh, some time ago that only God can police Nigerian borders. Oh. Our borders are as tight as a strainer. Yomi, he has painted that picture. Yes, so I'm, I'm looking at it in my mind's eyes. Are we damned? Hmm. It's, a, it's, I mean, what the president, for the president to openly say that, look, we've not been able to um, deal with this issue, it's, it's actually uh, not admitting defeat, but, you know, showing how, how enormous this problem that we're facing is right now. Um, it's a, we're not damned. Uh, right now, as we speak, there's uh, peace talks ongoing in Libya itself between hmm. the warring factions. So the insurgents and the government are having peace talks. As so if the talks would retrieve these weapons. Well, we're not no, necessarily, no, 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 but no, no, once, what, I mean, if, um, mm -hmm. once the insurgents begin to lay down their weapons and hopefully there is peace and then mm. they are able to at least um, create some semblance of sanity in the country, hopefully will the, the um, flow of weapons will reduce. But we should also consider that across the whole of the West African subregion, there's also that huge swath from Mali mm. all the way to Niger, Chad, and even down to Sudan, where you know there's also a free flow of weapons as well. So there's a weapons, there's a global weapons trade that people are benefiting from. Uh, and uh, Africa, Africa appears to be the exactly. The so you have rock, Central yeah. African Republic, you yeah. have uh, Somalia, you have a lot of countries that are essentially failed states, where you know, of course, Africa is is the is the, is the uh, frontier. Look at weapons for the supply of, in, of in weapons. bags. You think you are dealing with. In, in food stuff and all that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a really big business. business. It's, it's a huge, it's a huge enterprise. So you have wow. countries like um, Ukraine, Belarus, uh, with them um, discarded AK-47s. All of them are facing Africa, and some of them coming through Somalia because you know that there's the there's the ocean where, uh, that that borders Somalia. Some of them also come through the yeah. Atlantic. So it's a it's and, a and huge these merchants of death. Yes. Must go. It's into a global bed. enterprise. After after mm. the drug trade. Human uh, yeah, trafficking, the third, the third biggest um, illegal 
illegal trade, his weapons trade, yeah. and it's in billions of dollars. I talked in my opener, you know, we must do two things together, damage reduction, damage control. Hmm. I, I mean, if you understand me. Yes, well, damage control is, I think, where we are now, mm. you know, to try and stem the amount of killings that are taking place across, across the borders. I mean, uh, Mr. Chidi just said that there's approximately 1,000 kilometers stretching, with bordering mm. um, Niger. That's a huge area to police. And, you know, we need to begin to pay attention to certain aspects of this border policing and also have a second look at the... Um, the, international, uh, the international cooperation between the countries uh, in ensuring that you know, Boko Haram is stopped and this, also these illicit weapons are stopped yeah. as well. But one of the challenges that we've noted over the past um, almost 10 years or so is the <laughs> fact Sorry, that... Sorry, what was mm -hmm. this? No, this it's rice. 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 Weapons. Rice. Inside. So they must have concealed weapons beneath the bags of rice. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. So you think they are actually bringing in rice or other food items mm -hmm. into the country? When deep Deep trouble. It's, I mean, it's a big issue. So, I mean, with the, we have the, the cross-border criminality and all the other issues Sorry, that are happening. You, you think this is stockfish? You would think it's stockfish. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, once it's opened... Bad boys. Oh, come on. Once it's opened, you, you can see rice and those peeling out of the bag. Uh, but those are, they keep guns and those things. You know, if you deny them access to their weapons, a lot of these fights will end. Because you need to be armed to be able to, be able to wage war. Yeah. And you need to also constantly freshen up your weapons because um, the, the area where we found ourselves geographically, the, 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 the um, hot weather and all that okay. ensures that a lot of the weapons don't last. Especially okay. the sophisticated weapons. Now, why AK-47 is uh, particularly the darling of many people is that they found AK-47 to be very durable. Some of the American weapons and Israeli weapons, you know, um, assault rifles, for example, they jam. They jam um, they in response at, look, to... Look at this. Yes. this is big business. It is. It's a, it's a so they jam as a result of uh, Hamatan and okay. other vagaries of the weather. But the Kalashnikov is much more durable. That's why around here, a lot of them like to use Kalashnikov. But even at that, mm. you must constantly be able to bring in weapons so that when this one is damaged, you simply replace it. If they are starved of the weapons of war, they are vulnerable, and this wars will just this wars will end. So we have to police our borders. The other day, uh, the, the president gave a directive that immigration officers should be posted to border posts, you know, um, to police our border, fifteen percent or so yeah. of, of, of the staff. But it still may not solve the problem, especially in areas where we have. Um, Boko Haram and these bandits, the weapons at their disposal, the GPMGs, the RPGs, and even rockets mm. that you see uh, Boko Haram parade. The other day, they, because of the parapets that have been dug around Maiduguri now, it's difficult for them to roll their gun trucks into the city. Okay. Okay. Now they stay outside the city to fire rockets into the, into the heart of the city and they killed quite a number of wow. people the other day. So they can still uh, uh, visit terror on people without even getting into they, So, so the might city. I, as a neophyte, talk about gadgetry and uh, modern, <laughs> modern uh, you know, weaponry in dealing with these things? Gad gadgetry. I'm thinking of your drones and blah, blah, blah. Yes, we talk about drones. Government has to invest in drones because... For now, we are not seeing drones in action. And there's a reason for that, which I will not talk about here. Okay. <laughs> I will only advise that government should invest in drones. There are drones now that are being manufactured now that use solar power that okay. can be airborne for a whole month. All right. Now, what, does, what that saves you 
is the lives of your airmen, the lives of your troops, because they are unmanned area vehicles. That's what they are called. Mm. It means that they can deliver their area of weapons without um, any risk to, oh, yeah. to, to humans. Because they are controlled? Yes, far away, far from the scene, you know, and nobody's manning them. So even if you manage to shoot down the drone and, and the people here, the, the people that we are up against, they don't even have that capability. You know, they don't have such accurate uh, mm -hmm. weapons that can bring down a drone. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, if you can keep, you'll be able to uh, limit fatalities on the side of your troops when you use drones. And they will be airborne for hours. So when they are airborne for hours... Perhaps undetected? They, yeah, no, they, even, if, even, if, even if detected, they don't have the capacity to bring them down. Okay. I've okay. seen um, a Nigerian Air Force drone chasing a Boko Haram armor tank. Really? Clearly, the main battle tank was seized from Nigerian troops. It, it, it was running at a very fast speed, but the drone still managed to, to achieve a kill. Because where are you running to? The, the weapon that will hmm. take you out is, is airborne. There? Where are you? There yeah. is no, and it yeah. was inside Sambisa, a kind of open wow. space. So as it was running, the drone uh, let go yeah. of a rocket hmm. that, uh, that took it out. So yep. we, need, we need to really invest in drones. They will help us do a lot of um, re reconnaissance work, okay. you know, and they will also be able to deliver their weapons and, and to you can kill the enemy. point where the enemy is. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, because they, they have cameras, you know, yeah. that, that are very good, infrared cameras and all that. You mean, in all of this, we have the JTF, you know, yes. uh, Involving Nigeria, Niger, I think, and Chad, Chad and Cameroon. Cameroon yes. Mm. So, w what's the place of this thing in all of this? We, we, I mean, it's uh, the the MGTF was actually started way back in 1994 when there was a lot of cross-border uh, criminality. Yeah, yeah. And then it was, you know, stepped down a little bit and then came back up in 2014. And what's happened now with the problem that we've been experiencing over the last four years or so is um, there's a lack of trust between the countries. Again, because of cross-border disputes, you are taking over my land and all of that. So that is a problem. And the second one, which was identified by um, the Stockholm Institute in, in the EU, has to do with uh, something to do with um, the chain of command, who will be in charge, is, yeah. uh, is, uh, is also a big issue. So um, which army officer is rep reporting to who? Am okay. I reporting to a Chadian? Is the Chadian oh, reporting to me? So that's also, that's also a problem with the MGTF. So there's a trust issue. There's a trust mm. deficit, and then there's also cross-border issues as we, well. We'll get back there, but Yakub has joined us from Lagos. Good evening, Yakub. Are you there? I'm fine, sir. Good evening, citizen. Yeah. Welcome. And uh, Baba Jide and the other gentleman in the studio. Mm. Uh, yeah. Baba Jide, huh? I really give uh, thanks to God that uh, you are always giving us the truth concerning the insecurity in this country. Mm. But I have some questions, sir. Right. Mr. President says that uh, they are posting the immigration officer and the custom to the border area, even though we have a lot of border that is not even policing. How are they going to be policing our border? Why am I saying that? This Boko Haram that run down the military base, and then the, the custom officer that was not trained to face the war, to go to that Maduguri and other seas that this thing is uh, highly... Full attire. How are they going to? How are they going to police in that place? The second thing is this. But I read it on the uh, media today, newspaper today that Super Tucano is uh, is almost coming down to this country. Maybe in two months' time. Mm -hmm. What is what is uh, what is going to be again? If this Super Tucano, can we be able to make use of this Super Tucano and take these rubbish people out of our country? Thank mm -hmm. and good good evening, sir. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, the uh, Tucanos. I think about twelve of, of them. Uh, That's what six, I heard. Six will come in first in July. Yeah. Let me just respond briefly to his questions. The Super Tucanos are useful because. They've been tested in this part of the world. Tested in Afghanistan, tested in Mali, and found to be very useful. Now, you don't need an airport for it to land if the surface is hard. 
Oh, really? You know, he can land there. He can take off from there. V he vertical? Can he not, can not, land. Quite, not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. He, he can land because it's not, it's not um, so heavy. It's a small uh, fixed okay. wing uh, okay. uh, kind of uh, fighter. So they found it useful to that extent that at least it can land wherever the surface is hard. Hmm. So that will help us um, in war situations, or maybe there's a need to land in the case of emergency hmm. and all that. Then it can also be used as a reconnaissance aircraft. It has the equipment you know, for it Other, to be used. Otherwise, can also attack. Which yes, it can be used as a fighter bomber, and it can also be used as a reconnaissance aircraft. Meaning that it can be used to spy on enemy positions and all that, mm -hmm. which is actually what keeps our air force on air uh, more than anything. Yeah. They do hours and hours of sorties, just hmm. spying, looking for where. These guys are. Remember yeah. the one that came down the other day, killing those yeah, airmen? Yeah, yes, they were actually yes. on a mission yeah. trying to locate where those bandits are. Mm. So the Tucano can do that. And it also has, unlike most fighter jets, it also has the capacity to stay airborne for longer hours because of its fuel economy. Yeah, so yeah. They, we, we carefully chose this okay. ahead of other... Uh, um, uh, uh, airplanes yeah. that we could have uh, gone for. But I also think that the most important thing is for us to do is to get helicopter gunships. The, right. the kind of war that we are waging, I don't think we need fighter bombers as much as we need those helicopter gunships. Okay then, um, uh, we'll bury it here, um, mm -hmm. but not before. Y Yami, sometimes you, you, you get the fear we are becoming addicted to playing victim mm. at a time like this, you know, porous borders, um, helplessness here, there. And um, I, I share Mr. President's uh, helplessness. It, it, it's tough. It, it's a, we've gotten to a point where you, you, when, when you've been fighting a war for a long time and yeah. then you, you, you become hardened to even the yeah. stories of people that are dying on a daily yeah. basis. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think we should become hardened. I think we should continue to be sensitive and you know, we should keep we should keep the pressure, keep up the pressure against um, against the enemy. That's, uh, All right. that's important. Uh, again, we have dropped our opinion, um, molded here on the table. Uh, we trust that we'll do something with it. We'll go on this break and come back. Take on our second story. Please stay. Welcome back to our next story. You know, Imo State, the land of Iberiberism, that apologies to immediate past governor, uh, Owele Rochas Okorecha, that state is in the headlines. Confusion as courts give conflicting orders on Ifai Ararume over North senatorial election in Imo State. That's the screaming headlines in many dailies today. The story is Ararume had dragged his party, the All Progressives Congress, the APC, Ainek and Chukuma Ibezim of Abga to court over the December 5, 2020 senatorial uh, election, by election. The Ainek had declared Chukuma Ibezim of the Abga as winner of the election. Now, whereas a federal high court in Abuja declared Ararume winner, an Oweri high court has this restrained Ainek from issuing a certificate of return to Ararume. Is this Iberiberism? <laughs> I think, apologies. I think we, we, we find I ourselves know, in I know didn't declare anybody winner. now. We have to establish yeah. that. Oh, okay. I okay. Know they declared they, they, APC, APC winner. APC winner. Yes. Okay, APC, okay. technically, they have a candidate, candidate in the election. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry about that. But I think we're, we're in a situation where, you know, again, it brings us back to focus on the Nigerian legal system, which is quite convoluted. Mm -hmm. And a situation where, you know, one court is saying another thing and then another judge in another location is, is um, saying something else, which is, um, I think, this should not be the case. I mean, in this case, we're talking about an, an election that has taken place already. INEC has declared a particular party uh, winner without a candidate. And you now have a situation where uh. <laughs> a high court judge has now said 
that um, INEC should issue a certificate of return to uh, this new candidate, which is now uh, what is causing a lot of confusion. And it looks like there's a stalemate. We don't know what INEC is going to do. GD must understand what's playing out better than us. You know, um, what I see going on is politicians using the judiciary as a terror weapon. Hmm. Just after this judgment, this judgment that uh, the yeah, federal we, we, court, yeah. uh, um, Abuja uh, judgment by Justice Taiwo Taiwo, a high court in the most state ordered INEC not to issue, issue a certificate, certificate of return. return. <laughs> so, which means the order that the, uh, the high court in Abuja um, gave. gave that I next to implement within 72 hours has now been stayed. We have a history of courts of concurrent jurisdiction uh. giving conflicting uh, judgments. And what INEC wisely does in situations like this is to simply fold his arms and watch Sidon look until the apex court that you cannot override this judgment, mm -hmm. then makes a pronouncement. Once so, the sorry, sorry, what happens in the intervening period? And during that period... There will be no senator representing the... Yes, for now there is nobody representing our Kigwe zone. No senator representing him or not. And you know, even after they, they lost their, their, their former senator, it took almost yeah. two years before an election was held. Almost two years. It was in December 5 last year that we now had an election. So and, and, going, and now sorry, going that in, election. Go, go, sorry, going into the election, the APC never fielded a candidate. Technically, because there were two factions. Yes. The two factions uh, had primaries. <laughs> they went around the, the wards that made up the zone, conducted primaries. And at the end of the day, they both used the courts to stop one another from emerging as the <laughs> candidate of the party. Because clearly, the NWC of the APC favored Ibezim, Frank okay. Ibezim, or is it Chukudi Ibezim? Chukudi. It's his name. And we also, they also call him Frank. <laughs> Some call him Francis. You know? So, Frank Ibezim is the candidate of the governor, the choice of the governor. But at the end of the day, Ararume got a court to say, okay, you are the candidate of this party. <laughs> but another court said, no, Ararume, you can't be candidate. So at the end of the day, they went to that contest without, uh, by the, by, yeah. uh, by INEX reckoning. APC never fielded the candidate. Even though it won. Then it went ahead to win the election. You know? Now, the PDP has been screaming that, look, how much longer will this nonsense go on? A party technically didn't field the candidate, but it's been uh, declared winner. But INEC never returned any individual as the winner of the election. Parties are inanimate objects. Yeah, yeah. You know, they are inanimate objects. But the law of our country recognizes that people vote for parties and not individuals. Mm. That's where the problem is. Ordinarily, APC would have been disqualified from this contest because, look, if you, if you uh, did not feel the candidate, as we have seen, why would your party... Why would, why would you be declared uh, winner. winner of the election? So now, the person the election. who was not... Yes. Now, the person... And the law also says that to be, to be um, properly elected, you must take part in all phases. Mm. All phases of the election. Yeah. So now, if you are not the candidate in the election... Can you actually be said to have taken part in all the phases? So 
Imo has left us in a very confused state. Don't forget that recently the Supreme Court gave an order declaring that Ibezim did not get fair hearing at the lower court. <laughs> now, just as they were jubilating that, yes, it means that this thing may eventually go to Ibezim, then there was another court order showing that he did not, and in the Court of Appeal, affirming that he presented fake certificates oh. and therefore uh, uh. has been disqualified. Just, uh, Justice Taiwo also alluded to that in his judgment, that yes. look, yeah. the guy remains uh, disqualified. Therefore, the second person, the second, uh, that's uh, Ararume, Ararume from the other faction of the APC in the state, <laughs> <laughs> according to the court, <laughs> is now the candidate of the party. But before Ararume could jubilate and actually bring out uh, uh, bottles of champagne, they got another court to say no. Don't go ahead to give him certificate not, of return. Not to who and, yet? Yeah, I think it's the Supreme Court that will eventually... I'm sure uh, even our viewers, and by, by this point, are very confused <laughs> with the... Yeah, yeah, I mean, with, with yeah, the let's cases, yes. let's uh, digress a little. You, you look at Iberibirism like this, uh, and you ask yourself, does the politician have any job? Well, somebody said um, on social media the other day that... Um, Make sure you work hard and have enough money for retirement so that your retirement will not be politics. Oh, yes. Because it, it seems like once, once um, certain people get into politics, either as governors or um, as senators, they just want to stay there for as long as, you know, as can be. For instance, uh, if Senator Arame himself would be going for a third term if he's eventually handed mm -hmm. that Senate seat. So, I mean, he has done two terms already. So you have a situation where it looks like, um, like you said, our politicians are essentially... Jobless. Uh, their job is politics, not, not no, governance. No, no, and no, not no, no, no. Not what, what, ensuring what, that there's no, progress. What, what I mean, no, no, J, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm saying if you must die over a seat... It means you have nothing to fall back on. That's no, no, essentially. No, no, that's not. That's not. Okay. Very, some of these people have so much to fall back on. Oh, really? Aruma is one of the richest Nigerians. So, what is it about politics? A seat at he's, the national assembly in, in Abuja. He has tons of investments in Abuja. Some of the finest department stores in Abuja, owned okay. by him. It's not a question of uh, they have uh, nothing to fall back on. Yeah. And you can't say that Okorocha has nothing to fall back on. He's a senator now. He's, he's, he's a senator and has one of the biggest investments in property in the whole of Abuja. Okay. You, yes, I'm, I'm telling okay. you what I know. So yeah. they, 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 they think that politics, without politics, that they are nothing. But we are that, talking about necessarily true? But there are people, how about, how about James Manager? Do you know how long James Manager has been in the Senate? <laughs> He's been there since God knows when. So this is the thing. They want, they, there's nothing, the easiest money to make is in politics. Money that you literally didn't sweat for, it comes in form of politics. Okay. So it's a lot, and then when they are not in politics, they feel like fish out of water. You see a man, he just lost an election. That same day, he's already scheming for the next election. He wants to get back there. So, 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 you're, you're, so sorry. this is let, the let, thing. Let, yeah, and it's not, I, I don't want to call them greedy, but they are obsessed with politics. Okay. They already, they, they see politics as, uh, as something that they can never retire from. So it's not a question yeah. of they have not. They have so much no, no, to fall yeah, back but, on. But they don't want to give up. Even mm. the the fifteen year old boy will wonder what in the inside. Wow. Which is why what in the inside. Which is why they said uh, you know I mean, again I was watching reading on social media they said that those who are waiting to steal are more than those who are already stealing because there are people who. <laughs> they are waiting to they go want, into when politics. They grow up, they want to be like them. <laughs> they want. To, you understand? So we are hey. we are waiting for our turn. Essentially, so even the 15 year old boy, the 18 year old boy, you know, uh, they're waiting to get in there because, again, you're going in there for the wrong reasons not for governance, not for the people that you represent, not for, not for development, not for making, helping the people make progress. You uh, mean we're entrapped? Nation. We are entrapped. I'm sorry. 
Yes, we're on track. Uh, essentially, mm -hmm. that I think that's, that's where it is, which is why you know we're hoping that you know, even the younger generation would be thinking differently. But it looks like so that I, younger generation is also thinking like the, those presently in power. Such politics has no name. Maybe you have a name for it. <laughs> well, you just called it Iber Iberiberism just now. Maybe that's but what they've stayed even in the U.S. People stay longer than that. And the because they are but they elected. Serve. The same people who had been in the in the parliament since the fifties. Yes. They've been there. The so current the president, I, I understand, has been there for years. It was, it was there for yes. 40 years, yeah. Now, yeah. so if people had been, uh, somebody going to the uh, Senate or so, 1956, I was reading yeah. something about, about yes, yeah. and there are people who are like 82 years, they are in the U.S. Uh, mm. Congress, you know, so... I they but, too, but we, you see service. service. We are talking about... The system, yes. the system compels you to serve. Yes. And if you do not deliver... Compels. Yes. You, you know that you have to serve. Yeah. You know, yeah. there are all kinds of uh, checks and all that that mm. ensure that you stick to what you are sent to do. And you are duly do. elected or returned. Yes. You do not win elections simply through the courts, yes. either by bribing the oh, courts yeah. or by bribing INEC. You win elections because you deserve to win. Mm. So people... They, they are prepared to serve their people, and the people willingly, willingly, let them go there to serve. Mm. You know, so but but in our own case, politicians sometimes win elections in spite of us. In spite in of spite us. In spite of us. So, sorry, let me take a. Uh, Adegbite has joined us from Shagamu. That's in Ogun State, Nigeria. Welcome, Adegbite. I greet you. The uh, one thing I discover. Yeah. Is that our politics is not for people who are interested in serving the community? Thank you. Mm. So what I'm saying. Okay. Hmm. He, he that was made the point. That's it. That's that, the difference. Uh, that's, that, I mean, that's he hit the nail on the yeah. head. For Imo State, I think my if you were going to ask a layman's opinion, I think they should just go back to the polls. Yes, that's, I think if, it's, if the Supreme Court is going to issue a judgment, it has become too convoluted and too confusing. I think they should just no, go back to the polls. Even different, the they, they, they can't simply go back to the polls. There are different cases before the Supreme Court that the Supreme Court has to decide mm. on. <laughs> For example, there is a matter of Ibezim's uh, certificate. Yeah. And we know how the Supreme Court usually decides matters like this. It will simply disqualify you. It won't give you a chance to go and contest it. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You know? So that is there. The issue of who indeed was the candidate of yeah. the, the APC. APC. That too has to be decided. All of these things will end mm. at the Supreme Court. What they are doing to themselves now is just a uh, child's play. It's the Supreme Court what, what, that will eventually decide. No, no vex, gentlemen. What they are doing is simple iberiberism. Well, I'll leave it there. Please. <laughs> Let's go to our next story. Mekuna, no vex. It, it's sometimes some of these things no, hit you. Right? Terror. That's where I say that. I just won an election when I'm about to jubilate. Come, you come get on. another court to oh, say, come on, come no. on. Even, know, it, it, even in the banana republic. They are monitoring themselves. You know, a politician told me that when he had that, his opponent got a judgment. He got into a chartered flight, ran to another court to get a stay. That it if is. he had not done that, the guy would have won. Because it was a Friday. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he got into a, a, a the, private get, jet. This me, is what they do to themselves. Me, simply me. to stop that fellow. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's judicial terror I, that we are seeing. I prefer doing you, this by the politicians. I, I don't want politics. I don't want time. That's why some of us say we will never have a politician. I, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> come on, come on. Okay. You know, our national currency, the Naira, does not go far these days. What it loses in speed, it gains in distance. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, had to salvage the sinking Naira by injecting $5.62 billion into the foreign exchange market, Forex, as part of efforts to ensure its st stability. The amount represents an increase of $1.25 billion from the $4.37 billion intervention in the economy. That's in the third quarter of last year. A nation's currency cannot do with limitless interventions when there is something to do in order to give it a life of its own. Yes. And um, it's inevitable hmm. that CBN must do this. Why do I say it's inevitable? The CBN 
is scared to let the Nara float. The Scribian is scared to let the fundamentals of demand and supply determine the strength of our currency. So it has to occasionally intervene, push what we have, hmm. use what we have to defend what we have. So now, if they were to simply let the currency float, it could be in the region of maybe 600. To one dollar. Yes. And they are not going to allow come, that to come happen. On, but on. ultimately, what will save the currency, what will make our currency strong, is production. Yes. We are not producing enough. Yes. If we do not produce and come up with things that are competitive, you heard what uh, the WTO DG said to us, mm. that look, the economy, we must come up with the right strategies to manage the economy and make our products attractive even to countries around us. So we, we can earn foreign exchange yes. and buy up the... When the, the we Naira. earn more foreign exchange, remember in the 60s and 70s, when we were really producing and we had the Ghana pyramids and the rest. Oh, come on. Was, our, the was our currency not strong? Look, you know mm. I went to Kano the other day. Do you know that where they used to Pal the uh, yes, the Grano Pyramid. Do you know that that place you cannot get even a grain of granite? Uh, is the place uh, still there? If the place was there, they were playing. They, they turned it to a place where itinerant uh, uh, washermen were washing clothes. Later, they began to sell clothes there. Now they are building. Um, uh, many malls <laughs> and the rest there. So there's nothing like mm. Grano Pyramid anymore. So this is the thing. Even Coco, these days, remember Sonia Day even sang that song that Igi Coco, Digi, Dano Loco, that people mm. no longer plant Coco. Even Coco, uh, the, 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 the stems wood, the, of, yeah. the, uh, of the tree are now used uh, as firewood. firewood. So back mm. then, our currency was strong. But what do we have now? We are struggling to keep the currency at the level that it is. The CBN came up with one policy the other day that for every, just they are trying to attract diaspora uh, okay. remittances. Yes. Because okay. they've seen that they can actually earn a lot more from the, a lot more foreign Those exchange that come in. from diaspora remittances yeah. than yeah. we earn from crude oil sales. So they are trying to attract. I, I hear they, they come, come up to, to billions. Yeah. The, 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 their target is 30 billion. Wow. Now what the CBN is saying is, look, for every dollar that you bring in, you get five naira. Now, that is another technical defense of our currency because it then means that if, I think they can meet their target on that. It then means that if they were to meet their target of 30 billion in a year, you will have used 150 billion naira to, to, to attract uh, 30, 30, 30 billion, billion 30, dollars. Uh, to attract 30 billion dollars. That is also defending the naira, it, it and in another way, another form of devaluation. So this is where we find so ourselves. A subtle way. Mm. Yes, mm. you want to use 150 billion naira to bring in 130, and it's from our reserves that they go and take that 150 billion. Naira. So we are coming up with all kinds of uh, um, hmm. uh, approaches to solving a problem that we can only solve if we improve production, make Nigerian products attractive to and countries around us. Production can only be improved if you make electricity a priority. That is yeah. a big, big, is a big, big factor. Yeah. All of the SMEs hmm. that are dying, the big companies that are dying, running away to Ghana and the rest of them. They will stay here you know, if I, we have I, stable electricity. You, you, uh, Yomi, you, yeah. you shout yourself hoarse when you recall that Aswani here in Lagos has over 400 of its kind across the country. They have all shut down because electricity is not there. Electric, I mean, I mean you, have, you have factories, international conglomerates, moving to Ghana for production on a shame medley. Yes, because you know they moved from Nigeria. I mean, Nigeria used to be you know the, the hotbed for 
for production and you know international companies coming here. So you have Unilever producing things like Blue Band over in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You have Michelin that has packed up and go uh, and gone. That so in, Dunlop, Dunlop as well. So a number of these right, companies have shut that, down. Uh, Nestle too wants to go. I hope because it it's have... easier, you know, it's, <laughs> it's typically easier to produce from another country and then import it into Nigeria. <laughs> and then, you know, we, we also have you know, international companies and international products, imported products, cheaper mm. than the one that SMEs are producing in Nigeria. Cost of which is also, you know, is, is also a big problem. Right now, as we speak, our foreign reserves has dropped from around 40 billion, uh, maybe about mm. uh, two years ago. Now we have 34.7 billion dollars which is why and it's a result of this continuous defending of the naira because they have to use dollars to continue to defend the naira so, sorry can, can can you go back in your mind's eyes to where we started flogging the naira you remember in the babangida years we devalued the naira three times you had the american auction the dutch auction the whatever and and sap came yes well, more. we stopped producing well, we, and here we are today. It has continued to degenerate. Yes. From 83 to 85, 87. So it is not a miracle, yes. as Jide has said, produce and give us electricity. Leave the rest. When uh, this CBN governor took over, we were on 185 to a dollar. Yes. Now we are, we are around 580, 581 sometimes. <laughs> He's, he has not been able to... to um, keep the currency strong, in my view. And all efforts, all strategies have failed. They will tell us, oh, we are going to do this, we are going to do this, at the end of the day. Now, you can see why British Airways will charge Nigerians a lot higher than they charge Ghanaians. Mm. Because of the volatility of your currency. Mm. Because we try to harass them, that why, why are you doing this? Why? Mm -hmm. Because you are not sure that this morning, the rates at which you exchange the uh, uh, that we'll our currency will subsist even at 6 p.m. Mm, mm, Whereas mm. in other countries, look at, look at uh, South Africa, for example. Gold is their major oh, yeah. foreign exchange earner. But everyone knows that gold is not subject to the volatility that uh, mm. oil is subject to in the international market. It's so stable. So you can plan and their currency has remained uh, about the same rate to the dollar for many years. Let me pause you there a little. You have talked about gold. Jide, there's gold in this country, but of, we can't exploit of course, to advantage. Of course, Does that because, not worry you? because we've chosen to focus on I'm crude worried. oil. The things that we used to do in the past, we brush them aside because we think <laughs> that oh, it's a lot cheaper to bring in, uh, to import uh, uh, petroleum yeah, products. Yeah. Everyone now focuses on crude oil. That is the thing. But you look at Botswana, they are making money from gold, from diamond. South Africa making good money from, uh, from, from, from gold and, and diamond too. All right. And we uh, have it in Elisha, we have it in uh, Zamfara, other places. Are you telling me? Um, uh, engineer Falabi is uh, on the line. Engineer, ju just a minute. Um, Yomi. Hello. Okay, engineer, you are here. Let's go. Oh, okay. Good evening. I greet you. We greet you too. Good evening, Baba engineer. Jide and uh, Yomi. Yep. And uh, Susan Jules. Um, I, I, yes, um, like uh, Baba Jide has really touched. I think Nigeria need to improve the economic activities, uh, the reintroduction, and more emphasis on catch crops to enhance foreign trade it is very very important for example oh, i think the government should have put more encourage for people to to to, to plant more cocoa and so that uh, and, and invest cocoa so that we can have trade that as it used to be in the 60s mm, yeah and, we, and and again like the pyramids that we used to have so unless that, when, when you are continuing to put in money, uh, or naturally, without having something to trade upon, if, if uh, tomorrow we uh, uh, don't the money, and we now, can go back uh, to uh, Falabi, uh, Everybody, not just you alone, we are perplexed. But the answer is there. Thank you for your time. Yomi, I was going to draw attention to this. Do you know, besides Venezuela, 
the second largest deposit of deep bitumen is in this country. Yes. But we import. I think we, 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 everybody's hoping that we were not, our situation is not going to degenerate and become that of Venezuela because Venezuela has the largest deposit of oil in the world, yet their currency has been on free fall for many years, even though it's... A they're also doing a little something wrong. Yes, they're, they're doing a lot wrong, actually. And they are also, it's also a result of um, some heavy sanctions from the U.S. Mm -hmm. But despite that, you know, they, they have decided that they're going to run a socialist economy and also continue to defend their currency. But now it's on a free fall. And with one dollar, you probably cannot... cannot uh, with 100,000 mm -hmm. of the Venezuelan currency, mm -hmm. I'm not sure you can buy one dollar. So they have a problem. And this problem is something that they have ignored consistently for up to 25 years oh, yes. since oh, yeah. the time of Hugo Chavez, yeah, which yeah. is now what is being reflected. Hmm. So in order for Nigeria not to also undergo this same issue, maybe in the next five or 10 years, we need to turn things around very quickly, maybe look at our agricultural I, I, policy I, I once guess, again and, and, and cause you know, some changes. You did, it will also perplex you that we used to be the number one producer of palm oil on the planet. To yes. Today we are importing palm importing. oil. Yeah, we've been importing so, palm oil now so, for up to 15 years. So, so that who, I know. who is saying, are you saying my governor, a Kwaibom state governor, mm. governor Udomi Manuel, you can go into an aggressive palm oil production. It takes nothing from you. Yeah. And if, Niger if you want, sell to Nigeria. We have an extensive... Uh, 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 palm fruit belt in that area. Oh, yes. You know? we, so we, we just... It. If a country came to Nigeria to take palm kernel from us, and we are now importing from, from that country, them. We, are, we should be ashamed of ourselves. It's a shame. We have admitted now that we are not producing even enough palm oil for our domestic production. Hmm. That's why you see processed palm oil. If you go to some of the malls, hmm. you see processed palm oil being sold. We, in our country, I've seen eggs. Hmm. Nigeria is the up for egg production in West Africa. But I've seen uh, foreign eggs being sold in oh, some yeah. of the malls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unashamedly. I've, I've seen foreign beef. Oh, yes. Most likely from Uganda and some other places brought into our country. We are so wide open uh, to all commerce. You never Even the we, people we, we do business import, air. We, we, import, we are not protecting them. We import Bomo. Peppers, you know, I, tomatoes. I hope and it will be a lot better. cheaper to bring so, such things in because the cost of production in those places is way lower than our, you, so our own mean, people won't be you, able to compete mean, I, I in was, terms of the price. I was told about some of the uh, fallout of cassava. It's up to Kaolin. So many things. Yes. yes. You know, no, it's just like uh, this uh, uh, palm, uh, palm, uh, palm tree. Well, yes. So exactly many things. So, done, man, yes. so many mm, things. Mm. Well, all of these are simply to protect the Naira because it is not rocket science. Yes, we are a praying country. Yomi, Jide, mm -hmm. no be prayer alone. No, no. We must do more no. than pray. Nobody prays no. like Nigerians. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not sure there's anybody in we, the world that's... I believe uh, that we have more churches per square <laughs> kilometer than any other country. Okay. And a state in this country, South-South, is uh, erecting an 11 point something billion Naira International Worship Center. Mm. It's all right. It's okay. Um, uh, what to do, but if not to thank Baba Jide Kolade Uchitoju for his time. I thank you. Well, too. I hope after this, your, our minds go, at least we have done our job. Yes. As is just to state it as it strikes us. And Nothing. expect that the people in government will do we'll, what's right. Yes. Yomi, many thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Yomi is Yomi Owokwe. We are looking at a workplace situation. Yes, when want, the Naira will be. We in want our money to be Oh, come on. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we continue to defend the Naira like this, with our hard hand foreign exchange, I beg we. Oh, we. Mm. All right, on behalf of the Backroom Boys, we say thank you for, for listening, uh, watching rather. And uh, we are also on YouTube at youtube.com uh, forward slash TVC News Nigeria. And. Uh, don't forget, on Sunday we are here from 1.30. Join us then. On behalf of everybody, I'm Citizen Jones. Bye-bye now.